books like Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs. All these books have wonderful, wonderful aspects of creation described within them and point us to not just the Creator, but point us to how we can go about living within creation, how we go about living within the natural world that we find ourselves and how it is a gift. And so as I think of wisdom literature and as I think of creation and what wisdom literature tells me about creation, I realize that it is a gift. Creation is a gift. The world I live in is a gift. I'm a part of it. I live in it and it is a gift from God. And because it is a gift from God, and we see that written right within the wisdom literature over and over again. Ecclesiastes 5 uh, chat, verse 19 is, is one place where we see that. But that God has given us gifts and one of the, the most precious gifts that God has given us is the world he created. And he has placed us in a beautiful world. And so because we want to honor God and we want to glorify God and because we understand and we have come to understand his creation as a gift, then we want to honor the giver of the gift. We want to honor the creator of the beautiful creation. I see the Bible's wisdom literature showing humanity the complexity, diversity, vastness, and complete incomparability of God's creation. God provided a complex, vast, and diverse creation, one where everything has its place and purpose. The more humanity discovers about God's creation, the more this is brought out. The more we understand, the more complex we find things to be. We may think we understand something, but it leads to even more questions. Sometimes we think we know all about something, but as we discover more, we realize we actually don't understand it at all. With creation being so complex, it often leaves us in wonder and amazement of this creation God has made. This wonder, according to William P. Brown, is part of the purpose and meaning of wisdom for humanity. In Brown's book, Wisdom Wonder, he says, if the transformation of character is wisdom's overarching goal, then the means to that goal involves the cultivation of wonder. Wonder is used for humanity to search and seek God's wisdom within creation. As humanity finds wisdom in creation, we see a glimpse of the same wisdom God used to form his creation. Proverbs uh, 6, take a, lesson, take a lesson from the ants, right? The ants don't have a prince and yet they're, they're able to do their jobs, they all have their roles and they're able to work together as, as a society, as a community and, uh, and you are to be the same way. The natural world is a source of metaphor, but the reason that, uh, that those metaphors work is because of the intimate knowledge of people's natural surroundings. And what we read in Job chapter 12 is that we can find wisdom, we can learn from creation. We can look around and we can be taught by the things that we see around us. Job says this, but ask the animals and they will teach you. The birds of the air and they will tell you. Ask the plants of the earth and they will teach you. And the fish of the sea will declare to you. You see, so within the wisdom literature, within this portion of the book of Job in chapter 12, we come to see that we can learn from the created order around us. We can learn from the things that God has given us, this gift that God has given us. It's not simply a gift for us to enjoy. We can actually glean good things, wise things. We can glean knowledge from the world around us and from the created things. I think Job, one of his problems was that he didn't know where he fit in the order of things. He didn't know what his role was. And so when God comes in, he immediately reminds him that the world's not all about you, Job. There are all of these other parts of creation, uh, and God's above all of that, but there are all of these other parts of, the, of creation that you fit into. 
and it, it fit the way he talks about about the different animals it it for me, it, it reminded me of the indigenous concept of animal nations. So if you look at an animal like the bear or the salmon, that those animals have a particular way of seeing the world. They have their own medicines. They have a specific set of knowledge. And, and they, they operate as, as a nation, uh, just not a human, a human nation. If we've forgotten today uh, that we're supposed to be in partnership with with the rest of creation, then Job had also kind of forgotten that, right? When humanity ignores the needs of the soil, the plants, or the animals, that is when things break down. Greed sets in and our wants take precedence over other parts of creation. We ignore the intricacies and interconnectedness of all living things. As Christ followers, creation is ours to live in and enjoy. To use, yes, but to care for, not to abuse. This is a privilege we are entrusted with, not a right to use or abuse. And so when we do mistreat the world in which we live, we are disrespecting the one who created, the one who gave us the gift. And when we mistreat and abuse the world around us, the land on which we live, when we pollute it, when we use it in ways that are harmful, not helpful, we are actually missing something. We're missing an opportunity to learn. When we push out things like living things, like creatures and, and, and push them out of their habitats, we are, we are missing out ourselves. We may think we're, we're doing a good thing because we're using the land and we want to develop the land, but we're also damaging ourselves because we're, we're missing that opportunity that God has provided for us to learn because the land and the created things were told in Job and by Job, and he points this out to his friends, the living things within the land, on the land, and the land itself can teach us things. I remember my, one of my professors from Nate's, uh, Terry LeBlanc, saying, you know, it, people, people in the West tend to not see themselves as being part of creation, right? We see ourselves as being totally separate from the creation, but he would say, if you're not part of creation, then what are you? Right? If, if, you're, if you're humans, yes, of course, you're part of creation. And if, if we really start to carefully observe uh, the rest of creation of which we're a part, we're, we're going to see the lessons that are there. We can't help but see the lessons uh, that the river has to teach us or that the forest has to teach us or that the salmon has to teach us, right? All of those different places, all of the, the different creatures um, around us, uh, the creatures we share the space with, they have lessons to teach us. So how should we live? As Jesus followers in this world, how should we live? Well, we should embrace the gift of creation. We should accept the gift of this natural world that God has given us. We should realize that we are a part of this world and we share this world. Yes, we share it with other human beings of different tribes and ethnic groups and families. And, and we have an impact, not just on our little place in this world, but we have a, a wider footprint, if you would. And so we need to be living in harmony. We need to be living in shalom. And the wisdom literature teaches us that, that we have a responsibility to live and to understand uh, the world in which we live. But I think we also, need to do our best to bring about, by our actions, bring about the shalom and the, and the peace and the prosperity that we read about in God's word, in, in the wisdom literature, quite honestly. This idea that if we live in right relationship with creation, then we will learn, we will grow, and we will be blessed.